Hey, this is Brian down at the Beer Snobs. We're here today at Limerick's Brewery down in uh, Upland, and we're interviewing Justin from Stone and Brewery, one of the largest breweries, obviously. Justin, can I ask you a question here? Uh, when did you first decide that you fell in love with beer? Uh, I'd have to say that was a while back. Uh, you know, obviously, turn 21, start drinking beer. Um, you know, you're like most of us were introduced to just the domestics, the Bud Light, the Coors Light. I just kind of like, all right, this is what this is what beer is. This is what people drink. This is what we do. Never really dug it completely, you know. Just kind of got bored of it. And uh, I think I want to say I was in a yard house or something, and I saw the stone handles, and they kind of stood out because there was I think three of them. It was Arrogant Bastard IPA and maybe Pale Ale. So I was like, hey, what are these? You know, I saw it was San Diego. I'm from San Diego originally, so I wanted to drink a San Diego beer. I got on the IPA. It kind of took me back a minute, you know, because it's aggressive beer uh, compared to you know drinking a lager or whatever. And uh, I want to say it left me curious. I came back for more, and just from then, it just I got that hot palate and just wanted to drink, you know, just creative, aggressive beers that just offered more than just the standard where you can't tell all the beers apart. You know, everything's unique, and it's just since then I've just been in love with it. It's awesome. So it was Stone, in fact, that got you into drinking beers. Because I mean, I remember when I first started drinking beers, it was the quest to get drunk. So right. I actually follow a lot along that. It's really cool. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about Stone in particular as far as what makes it different from other beers, other craft brews, and other other IPAs since that seems to be your original popular brew? Um, that's kind of a loaded question. Let me see where I start. Uh, I would say what sets Stone apart, is that what you're asking? I, I think... I think just Stone's whole dynamic and what they're about, it's not even, uh, I mean, it's obviously all about the beer, but at the same time, they're always pushing the envelope. I feel like, they, you know, I've only been with Stone now, I'm shy of two years, but, um, you know, so I can't take all the credit for what all these guys have been doing, but they've just got such a vision. They're stoked on everyone else out there coming about. I mean, the fact that they embrace other craft breweries, I think, gives them a solid name. They're not out there to tear down other breweries and people trying to you know put their name out there and do things that are their passion you know people want to start a brewery stone's all about it they want to check them out and see if we can help them out um you know you go down to the the bistro and you know you get beers and we have i mean most of the beers on draft at stone aren't even our stone portfolio so i think that 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 sets them apart and i think that just them continuously wanting just to do something bigger something cooler they you know possibly doing a hotel possibly doing you know other restaurants the tap room you know um that they want to open up in several other cities other than pasadena i think it's just been awesome so yeah no i agree i actually like a lot of the new ideas that they're coming out with as far as as trying to venture out other than just making the craft brew but how to get that craft brew out there and in the public hands a lot faster i mean aside from the cool name and the fact you guys are practically everywhere now it's it's pretty impressive some of the different ideas you guys did have uh, uh i know you talked about the possibility of a hotel uh this pos this hotel is on the back burner right now it's just an idea up in the air uh it's not up in the air uh i believe uh from greg cook's mouth i mean it's it's still something that's going to happen but uh you know they're in the process of uh opening up liberty station next to point loma college that is going to be a huge facility huge restaurant it's going to be I believe I haven't been down there but I've seen slides it's gonna be insane it's gonna be a small batch style brewery where they're gonna do a lot of off brews um, I believe it's gonna sit close to seven eight hundred people I mean it's just gonna be if not the biggest one of the biggest restaurants slash breweries in San Diego County so you know you can only do so many things at once but I know that the hotel is definitely something that Greg is passionate about and Steve Wagner so um, it, it's something that will happen it's just you know one thing at a time so well, that's something one thing at a time that I'm actually excited about um, okay so out of all the different stone brews that you guys have now which one would you consider your favorite what's the one that you really look forward to drinking when you get to work in the morning oh that's hands down self-righteous it's self-righteous every I mean I don't get bored of it it's awesome beer it's got so much going on it's got so much hops on it with just it's it's delicious. It's self righteous. Well, what kind of beer is self righteous? Is that a stout? Is that an IPA? What what's what's that's, what's what's special about about self righteous? Self righteous to me is it's it's practically like a double black IPA. I mean it's I, I like all types of beer. You know I like stouts. I like you know the hoppy IPAs. It kind of almost brings them together where you get like that smoky rich flavor on it. 
and then you just get that hot bite on the back end, you know, and it just, it's just the, the cleanest finish, you know, it's for everything going on with that beer, it's so balanced, and it just always does the job. That's fantastic. That's something. Now, now I'm getting thirsty just thinking yeah, right. about that. I'm drinking it, uh, the self righteous with espresso right now. Yeah. Oh man, I, I have to trade you beers here pretty yeah. soon. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Pasadena Phil store? Uh, well, I was there for the opening. I do not remember the date, but I want to say it was close to. Uh, it's probably about a year ago, close to it. I I, I could be wrong, but uh, it was awesome. It was a party down there just to set it off and just introduce Stone to Pas you know downtown Pasadena and see how it would, how it would go over. And I mean, it's just it's been incredible. It's I feel like it just branches out to other people that might not stumble across craft beer. You know, people walking around. Oh, what's this? You know, and they come in and they see the store. They see that people get growlers. They fill them up and. You know, you got people that can just kind of hang out on the patio there, and I think it's just been a really cool dynamic, just bringing a different crowd in that normally maybe wouldn't, you know, be introduced to craft beer or you know take the chance on it. So it's been cool. I mean, it's been very awesome. I'm I I'm not out there as much um, as some of the other guys because I'm Inland Empire, but it's beautiful. I mean, like anything Stone does, it's it's great. Yeah, it's true, anything that Stone does. Well, this is definitely the perfect place to do that. People who are hungry for some different types of small-time craft brewery beers would be Inland Empire, Pasadena, the entire, I think, entire Southern California area is right, pretty into yeah. that. So let me ask you another question here. You started in Stone and you got into distributing. Aside from having an easy job of trying to hand out Stone, which I think everybody's hungry to get a hold of, right. how often do you guys get blasted when you're at work? When I'm at work getting blasted? Do you mean... Well, I, I mean that since you don't have a hard job of distributing these beers, it can't be that difficult. Everybody wants to get a hold of Stone when they can and when you guys come around. Right. You guys have a lot of free time, I'm assuming. And on that free time, how off, how how often do you and your buddies get wasted on Stone? Uh, not often, believe it or not. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we do sell Stone, which is, it, it's, not, it's not a hard sell. You know, people know it, especially selling it in Southern California. But, I mean... It is, it is still a job. We hit the pavement every day, and we have, a, you know, a, we're a distributor, so we have close to 40 other breweries that we're selling for, and we truly are passionate about these other guys out there that are a year or two in, three years in, that want to get their beer out that we are huge fans of, you know, and passionate about. So, you know, we've already got Stone in, and I'm pushing other, other craft breweries that we've taken on in our portfolio. And, you know, meeting up with, you know, a rep from Great Divide or Avery or Oscar Blues and going out and doing tasting. So it's just, I mean, craft beer in the last few years, there's breweries popping up. We brought up a list of how many craft breweries have popped up in the last year, and you almost think it's a joke. And so the competition's still out there. I mean, people think it's just the easiest job, but there are so many breweries just everywhere if you pull up the map. And you're like, who? Who are these guys? Whatever. And all of a sudden you start seeing their placements, their tap handles. So it's just kind of keeping a positive attitude and making sure everyone's in it for the right reasons, and I think that everyone wins. So it's it's definitely still competitive, but it's we're definitely on the right team. I think you got, you actually hit on a really good point of a lot of smaller craft breweries popping up lately and causing a lot more competition. Uh, do you feel like maybe Stone is starting to get a bad name and getting washed in with the with the the Budweisers and the Coors just because you become such a big name out here locally, or do you feel like you're still treated as a craft brewery and given that independence? I mean, there might be those few that would maybe have those words, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think that when it comes down to it, Stone still has such a, a small batch craft brewery mentality about the way they go about things. I mean, Stone's been successful, but that's because they've done things efficient. They've done them right. I mean, you know, you can't hate on that. And I think that uh, they're still always looking to help out other other breweries. I think if they ran it for themselves and just blowing up, then that would be different. But. You know, I think that it's just everyone has a true passion. I mean, that's the main thing. When I was hired, anyone else, are you passionate about craft beer? And that, that's more important than anything, really, to Greg and Steve. It's, do you love it? I definitely love it. Thanks so much, Justin. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sitting down with me, man. And we're going to get a lot of beers over here from Stone we're going to enjoy. All right, this is Brian from Beer Snobs. Don't do drugs. Calling all Beer Snobs. How you guys doing tonight? I am B. I'm with Brian. And uh, we're at Limerick's Tavern for the Stone 420 Takeover. Uh, as you see in front of us, guys, we have all of these beers that Stone has put on tap. I mean, here's the list. If you want to go through it, it is the Sublimely Self-Righteous with Espresso Beans, Sublimely Self-Righteous, Smoke Porter with Vanilla Bean, my favorite, uh, the 15th Anniversary, uh, the Levitation Double Dry Hops with Target Hops. So it's the hoppiest one in here, obviously. Uh, what else do you see? 
<laughs> oh man, other than the dry hop, the double hops? Yeah. Stone Ruination. Oh yeah, we got Stone Ruination. We've got the Stone Kelly. Belgique. Belgique, there we go. My glasses aren't on today, guys. And uh, the Stone Old Guardian. The Ailman Two Brothers Stone Damon Coffee. And the Stone Mixtape Ale Volume 4. That's beautiful. You know, last time we were here, uh, when they first did, this is the second year they're doing the Stone Takeover at this bar. We were here last year, and we had a great time. They had a lot of good beer. If you go to the website, you'll read our report on it. The thing I noticed with Stone is that Stone pairs so well with big, heavy foods. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, if you have what you have, here they call the man pizza. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Meat on meat on meat on meat with some bread and cheese. Fucking amazing. They also have uh, bacon mac and cheese, which goes really, really well. Wait, let me get that for you. Hold up. Bacon mac and cheese. Covered with deliberate amounts of cheese and bacon mac. And we have all these beers in front of us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Brian. Brian, what was your favorite beer tonight? My favorite beer tonight has to be the Ruination. Uh, close second. Close second is definitely the Mixtape. Mixtape is a really good taste and a lot of neat stuff in it. I'm with you on that. I think the mixed taste is one of the best things Stone does. I think it's like jungle juice beer, and that's awesome. But tonight, I'm going to go with the smoke portal vanilla bean. For some reason, tonight, it came out way stronger than vanilla. A lot sweeter. Uh, not as smoked as we had it before in a bottle. But, again, awesome beers from tonight. Guys, remember, come down to Limerick's Tavern. They're going to have these beers on tap for a while because they're going to top them out. You come in here, have a good time, drink the beer with us. Uh, next time we have an event, follow us on Twitter, follow us on our Facebook, come down. You can have one of these beers take with you because I don't think me and you can finish this. Do you think so? No, I'll give it the old college try, but uh, that's going to be hard to do. The old college try involves you puking a lot. Remember that? That's, that's, that's absolutely right. I don't see a lot of trash cans around here. So, uh, yeah. So I'm B from the Beer Snobs. This is Brian and? This is Brian. Uh, beer Snobs, please don't do drugs, and we're going to have fun with some of these beers. And, of course, we'll see you at the bar. See ya. Wait, 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 wait. One time. Wait, wait. Look at this. Look at this. Bring this on camera. That's a peach cobbler. That's the peach cobbler. I'm finishing that, I promise. Night. Good night, guys.